Could the Denver Broncos play with fire, trade down in the 2024 NFL draft, and still try to get the quarterback they want? We're taking a look at that scenario exactly in a Mock Draft Monday episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in Broncos country. My name is Sayer Bettinger, co-host of the Locked On Broncos podcast, bringing you a brand new mock draft Monday today as we explore a scenario where the Denver Broncos, they maybe play around a little bit and, and try to trade down in the first round of the NFL draft while still getting a potential starting quarterback from now on. Excited to break down that selection as well as all of the other mock draft madness in today's episode. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And thanks and shout out to every one of you who subscribes to the show or follows wherever you get your podcast. If you watch on YouTube, we're so grateful for every single one of you tuning in right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's waste no time. The Denver Broncos, we did us, we ran a, another simulation. It's mock draft Monday. We're kind of taking a look at a scenario in which you'd like to have your cake and eat it too, right? This is a, a scenario that's become, quite frankly, very popular among Broncos country. It's just a matter of. Uh, you, you look at it from a couple of different perspectives, right? Because when you talk about trading down and selecting a quarterback, it kind of gives off the vibe that maybe you didn't really love the prospect to begin with, right? Because, well, if you love the guy, why wouldn't you just take him at number 12 overall? The Denver Broncos, though, are in a unique situation where this year's quarterback class, George Payton, the general manager, has said they believe it is six, maybe seven players deep at the position, and there are potentially six quarterbacks that could go in the first round of the NFL draft. Now, would the Broncos take the fifth or sixth one at the 12th overall pick? That remains to be seen. But this Mock Draft Monday is going to start off with a trade-down scenario with the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys moving up in this scenario, maybe to replace Tyron Smith at the left tackle position. And the Broncos, they move down to the 24th overall selection, and they pick up a second-round pick and a third-round pick in this Mock Draft scenario. So the Broncos, we're now working with pick number 24, number 56, and then in round three, you've got number 70 and 87 so that's plenty of capital for this team to do some damage and with the 24th pick I went with Michael Penix Jr. the quarterback out of Washington now we see some scenarios where the Broncos take Michael Penix Jr., but a lot of times people are, are really hesitant to include him in the first round of their mock draft scenarios. And why is that? Well, the first reason is being that Michael Penix Jr. suffered a number of serious injuries in the at the college level when he was at Indiana. And he brought those into Washington with him, just kind of question marks about his durability and health. But here's why. I've kind of been sold. I know that your your evaluation on a prospect doesn't really change based on pro day performance and things like that. But Michael Penix Jr. went out there, and according to reports, he ran a, somewhere between a, a four four six and a four five six forty yard dash. Let's call it a four five. He runs a four five forty yard dash. He has a thirty six and a half inch vertical leap, and he proves that there are no ill effects of that those knee injuries multiple knee injuries that he had on top of other things that you know uh, issues that you deal with at the quarterback position you take a lot of hits things like that but Penix Jr became an expert at not getting sacked late in his his college career and yes he's going to be an older rookie which is why i think another reason why i think a lot of people don't feel he's maybe worth the first round investment but really what Penix was able to do at the college level was develop his game in a way that he wouldn't have been afforded the opportunity to do at the NFL level. So there's reasons to like him with the Denver Broncos, right? Sean Payton said at when he met with the media at the NFL annual league meetings, he said that one of the biggest ways this offense for the Broncos can improve in 2024 is not taking as many sacks. And I think that's something that either if you like Michael Penix Jr., if your flavor of the week is Bo Nix, those two guys do a pretty good job 
of not taking sacks. And I think what we saw with Penix Jr. and and his athletic traits that really jumped off the page because you didn't see him do a ton of running around at Washington, it kind of further proves that maybe there's more in the bag at the NFL level. He probably has better arm talent overall than does Bo Nix. And those two guys kind of similarly improved after a slow start to their collegiate careers. Penix started off at Indiana. And I remember watching him against the Iowa Hawkeyes a couple of times and thinking like, man, this I, I feel bad for this guy. I feel bad for the way that he's struggling out there. And he really took his game to a next level, became a Heisman candidate, obviously has now become a potential first round draft choice. And and yes, he was working with some really talented guys there at Washington, but so was Bo Nix at Oregon. I mean, maybe not to the exact same degree, but both of those guys had really good offensive lines. Both of those guys had offensive schemes that really highlighted their strengths and mitigated their weaknesses. So I think one of the, and, and this is a strange reason, but maybe one of the other only reasons why people don't necessarily love the idea of Penix is fact that he's left-handed and you don't see a ton of left-handed guys excel in the NFL. Now, it's not impossible for that to happen, but look, this is a prospect that I think he's going to command the attention of a locker room. I think he's got a lot of upside in terms of what you talk about, his arm talent, his athletic traits. He doesn't need to be a running quarterback, but he can be. And I think that upside there is going to give Sean Payton the, the versatility to run whatever he wants offensively. You want to go quick tempo down the field Michael Penix Jr. can do that you want to take a deep shot downfield he's got the arm strength to be able to deliver that shot and hey you want to mix in the quarterback running game we've seen now that he can do that and he proved there's no ill effects from those knee injuries. And he did clear medically at the NFL Combine. Those are oftentimes the, the biggest reason why guys do end up falling in the draft is that teams get back their medical reports at the NFL Combine. And it's like, well, this guy has a degenerative knee problem. We saw uh, an example was Nicobe Dean a couple of years ago out of Georgia, supposed to be a first round pick at linebacker. One of the best players in the country ends up falling to the third round in the Philadelphia Eagles because of his combine medical reports by all accounts michael Penix jr passed those tests with flying colors so you've got him he's cleared medically he's got great arm talent he's elite athletically at the quarterback position he improved tremendously over the course of his time at washington he's got a ton of experience which we know sean payton from the bill parcells coaching tree he's going to love that so in this scenario, the Broncos get an upside shot at the quarterback position at pick number 24 overall, as well as picking up an additional sec. They get a second round pick. They're back on the board in round two, and you get an additional third round selection out of this in the hypothetical trade with the Cowboys. Broncos country, what do you think about this idea? Michael Penix Jr. potentially joining this team as the franchise QB of the future. The Broncos have been getting a lot of eyes on him in recent weeks here, and they had a formal meeting with him at the scouting combine with a very interesting twist. As far as we know, Penix Jr. is the only one that the Broncos grilled on his worst plays at, at Washington. And that's a fascinating thing. Why did Davis Webb, the quarterback's coach, why did he do that with, with Penix and not necessarily anybody else? Because we didn't hear about that for any of the other guys. It was kind of all just about the, well, you know, Coach Payton really liked my tape. It was a really, really good meeting, things like that. Penix was the only one that had kind of an interesting situation there. So maybe a little uh, breadcrumbs to follow there, maybe some tea leaves to read into Broncos country, but this mock draft Monday kicking off with a quarterback. And we believe the Broncos can do some damage now in rounds two and three with the additional capital in this draft. And what are they going to do? If they add some playmakers for this quarterback, the Broncos offensive arsenal needs to be upgraded. Even after bringing in a guy like Josh Reynolds, we're going to be going heavy after playmakers in rounds two and three of this Denver Broncos mock draft Monday. Today's episode of Locked On Broncos is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the NCAA tournament. MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more action. There's a ton of it out there right now. For you Rockies fans out there, 
you may not necessarily want to be placing a ton of bets on the Rockies, but how about my Cubbies? I mean, man, they've got a good chance to be a sleeper team this year in the MLB, or maybe your, your team's still going in the NCAA tournament. There's opportunities out there. It's the it's one of the best times of year to be a sports fan. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. The Denver Broncos need to add playmakers to the offense, and they will do exactly that on today's Mock Draft Monday episode, Locked on Broncos. want to say thank you to every single one of you that makes Locked on Broncos your first listen of the day every single day right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you know it's your team every day, free and available everywhere that you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And shout out to those of you that watch the show on YouTube and subscribe. We really appreciate you as we inch closer to the NFL draft, the Broncos upgrading their roster, potentially getting new uniforms, any free agent moves that get made. We're going to break those down on locked on Broncos. And speaking of playmakers, the Broncos did just add over the weekend Josh Reynolds, a wide receiver formerly of the Detroit Lions. He's going to come in and bring this team a smooth operator from the slot or outside, very physical in the running game when asked to do so. Really underrated pickup for this team. But are the Broncos done adding playmakers? I don't think so. And so with the second round pick that the Broncos acquired from the Dallas Cowboys in this hypothetical mock draft trade, number 56 overall, I went with Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver out of Florida. Now there's a very interesting connection between he and Denver Broncos wide receivers coach, Kerry Colbert. Colbert was the wide receivers coach at Florida in 2022 when Pearsall was initially brought over as a transfer from Arizona State. So you kind of kind of gets the gears turning there a little bit. You start to think, okay, there's a connection there between these two guys. They know each other very well. And I think having a guy like Pearsall come in and join a room that has now added Josh Reynolds. You bring back Tim Patrick on a one-year deal. You've got Cortland Sutton in there. And then Marvin Mims expected to take an expanded role you now have what the Broncos have not had at the wide receiver position in quite some time. Depth. They, they desperately need depth at the wide receiver position. Now, in round two, if you add a pick here, the Broncos could go any number of directions. They could go offensive tackle. They could go defensive line. Some people think maybe they need a linebacker here in this kind of a slot. But I love the idea of adding another receiver. You get a quarterback in round one. You want to make sure that he has everything he needs to succeed for the long haul. Now, the Broncos have a pretty good offensive line, despite what many people may think, despite the sack numbers from Russell Wilson, which Russell Wilson took a higher percentage of unnecessary sacks meaning he was the reason for the sacks than any other quarterback in the league over the last two years, him and Justin Fields up there, now both on the same team in Pittsburgh. But the Broncos don't necessarily need to force offensive line. If they could get a top-tier tackle in round one, that's a different discussion. But the value at wide receiver in round two is tremendous. And Ricky Pearsall, he blew up the NFL combine, 42 inch or 40 inch vertical and 442 in the 40 yard dash, just looked really smooth through the gauntlet drill. And he did a lot of things at Florida that leads me to believe he could be a great fit for Sean Payton's offense. He's in terms of being a, a quick strike receiver, he's going to get open quickly. And of course, the Broncos traded Jerry Judy to the Cleveland Browns, so they need wide receivers that can get open quickly. I think Josh Reynolds gives you that, but I think Ricky Pearsall is that guy who could end up over the long term because we don't know how long is Cortland Sutton going to be around, how long is Tim Patrick going to be around. He's a guy that I think could get open quickly for you and somebody who can create offense after the catch. He's good at the catch point. I like Ricky Pearsall and his fit in Denver. I don't think he's going to be there in round three. I know that our mock draft machines typically will say, hey, Ricky Pearsall, you can get him in round three. I, I see that Daniel Jeremiah over there at NFL.com, he's got him ranked in the top 40 prospects. Now, I tend to align more with what DJ is saying than what the mock draft machines are saying because DJ is connected to actual NFL teams, and so he's going to know where they value this guy. So getting him at 56 might even be a bit unrealistic at this point, but I like the idea. You get Michael Penix Jr. in round one, you trade down in that scenario, and you get Ricky Pearsall in round two, but with the top pick of the third round, now the Broncos do have two picks in the third round in this scenario. How about Ben Sinat, the tight end out of Kansas State? Here's an interesting tie and connection for you. 
Ben Sinat at the Senior Bowl was coached by Zach Grossi, who was an offensive con quality control coach for the Denver Broncos. His position coach at the Senior Bowl, he said that he met extensively with the Denver Broncos. He's kind of a move player at the position. Now, what does that mean? It means that he can play in line. It means he can give you kind of that H back. It means that he can split out and play wide. He's got tremendous athletic traits, versatility. He's a playmaker as a receiver, had 10 receiving touchdowns over the last two seasons. And I think that the reason that you make this pick is, is exactly what general manager George Payton said at the scouting combine when he said that tight end is a need for this team. He, he said, you know, look, we need a tight end. We were missing it last year who can really get open over the middle of the field. I think Ben Sinat is a guy who can do that for you. He doesn't have the, the prototypical size for a tight end, right? He's he's about 6'4", about 250 pounds, whereas the prototype at the position is typically going to be 6'5", 260 when you're talking about inline guys. He's not exactly that, but I think there's a space for him in this offense with Sean Payton. And I think the Broncos, they've expressed plenty of interest in him already at this point. So now here you've gone from Penix Jr. in round one, and then you go after a couple of playmakers in round two. And that's exactly what the Broncos desperately need. They desperately need offense creators. And I know that a lot of times you look at the draft and you think, well, okay, these are the top, X, you know, top three needs in the team, X, Y, Z, and you've got to address them one, two, three, one after the other when it comes to the draft. I think that the Broncos are in a position right now where they just they if they if they go with a quarterback in the first round they really have to focus on making his life easier and better as quickly as possible. You don't necessarily want to, not that you can't do this because the best player on the board might be a corner or an edge guy or a defensive lineman in round two or three. But I think you, you get these playmakers in place, guys who are good value for the position. They're going to play a role for you year one. They're going to be impact players down the line at some point. And I think that this is a scenario where you get guys like Penix, Pearsall, and Sanat in the building, and you all of a sudden now have a bit of an exciting core of young offensive players to work with for Sean Payton and his coaching staff to mold. And one thing that I really like about all three of these picks so far is the fact that the Broncos have got hands-on work with all three of them already. They've, they've had multiple run-ins with Michael Penix Jr., who will also, according to our friend Mike Kliss at Nine News in Denver, Michael Penix will be having a formal visit with the Denver Broncos. Already sat down with them at the scouting combine. And the Broncos had a contingent at the Washington Pro Day as well. So, a lot of dots to connect there. A lot of hands on there. Ricky Pearsall, he's already been coached by Kerry Colbert, the Broncos wide receiver coach. The Broncos have had hands on with Grossi at the Senior Bowl at, you know, coaching Ben Sinat, the tight end. So they've got hands on information on these guys. They've spent one on one time with all three of these guys. You want to make educated decisions when it comes to the NFL draft. You want to know the people that you're drafting when you're when you're trying to rebuild a culture, when you're trying to rebuild an organization like the Broncos are you want to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting from all of these guys so that's one of the reasons why i like these top three picks but we've got another third round selection to work with as well as the remainder of all of our selections in this full six round denver broncos mock draft here on mock draft monday we're going to start upgrading in the trenches as we approach the third and fourth rounds here the broncos getting better on the offensive and defensive line in today's episode locked on broncos this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run, take a nap, read a book, show up for a friend? See, a lot of us, we spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is, for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. We make time for the things that are important to us. And therapy, it can help you find what matters to you so that you can do more of it. Therapy can be helpful for a variety of reasons. Maybe learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, empowering you to be the best version of yourself. And it's not just for those who have experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. 
Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. How can the Denver Broncos upgrade the trenches in the middle rounds of the 2024 NFL draft? We're going to do it on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. Thanks again, Broncos country, for making us your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you rocking with us all offseason here on Locked On Broncos. First three picks of this mock draft, they've been pretty, uh, I guess you could say they've been the sexy pick variety. Quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. You're getting playmakers. You're you're reloading at, at the offensive skill positions. Now it's time to go for some of the big boys here. And the third round with the pick acquired from Dallas in this hypothetical trade, 87th overall, the Broncos select Blake Fisher, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. Now, Blake Fisher was playing right tackle at Notre Dame these past handful of years. And there was a good reason for that because, well, Joe Alt, who was a potential top five pick in this year's draft, was playing on the left side. But Blake Fisher does have experience playing left tackle. He was initially recruited as a left tackle. And so his ability to play both sides, I think, translates very well to what the Denver Broncos currently need which is a developmental left tackle of the future behind Garrett Bowles. And the Broncos have not drafted. This is going to shock some people. The Broncos haven't drafted a true offensive tackle since 2017 when they selected Bowles in the first round. Now, I don't know about you. I don't view that as a, a great formula for longevity at the tackle position. It's a, it's a big reason why the Broncos have had a revolving door at the right tackle spot, which you now hope is going to be filled for the long term by Mike McGlinchey. But Garrett Bowles just has one year left on his contract. One year, $20 million. The Broncos kind of maneuvered the rest of their roster to be able to keep him around. As far as we know, maybe they'll draft a first-round tackle and trade bowls as of right now it seems like the plan is to have him starting in 2024 so you get a plan for beyond this season and i think that a guy like blake fisher could be that guy he's he's an impressive athlete he's got great size he comes from a great pedigree notre dame's done a great job of turning out offensive linemen for the nfl in recent years and so i think he would be a nice addition for Zach Streif to work with. And, and Streif has, has proven he can maximize the talent of the guys that the Broncos have on the roster. So I like the direction of this team on the offensive line. You just feel like maybe they need one kind of, maybe, I don't know if a top 100 pick is necessarily exactly what the team needs, but they need a tackle prospect that you could legitimately say, okay, that guy, that guy could start for the team in the future on the left side. I think the Broncos finally end their streak of not drafting offensive tackles, one of the weirdest streaks in the NFL right now. And I think they get one here in Blake Fisher, where I think he would be a nice pick even at 76 overall. Even if the Broncos don't do this trade scenario, I think Blake Fisher would be a really good pickup for this team. But we're not done building on the offensive line. With the 121st overall pick, the Broncos take Mason McCormick an interior offensive lineman from South Dakota State. Shout out to South Dakota and Brookings out there. I grew up about 45 minutes away in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's still crazy to see South Dakota State players really emerging as legitimate NFL prospects year over year. But man, they've done a tremendous job in recent years of cranking out NFL caliber guys. And Mason McCormick is fascinating. A 9.96 on the RAS scale, played guard at South Dakota State, but I think may be a, a potential transition to the center position here for the Denver Broncos. Now you may be wondering, what about Alex Forsyth? What about Luke Wattenberg? Well, those guys could still factor in. And I think in today's NFL, depth on the interior offensive line is massive. These guys are getting big money deals. We just saw that in free agency. And I think with a guy like McCormick, you have versatility. He could be a, a reserve at guard for you. He could potentially be a starting center as a rookie. I think he presents an intriguing wild card option for your offensive line in year one. Then with the 136th overall pick, the Broncos select LSU defensive lineman Makai Wingo and a familiar face for defensive line coach Jamar Kane, who coached Wingo at LSU a couple of years ago. He's going to know exactly what he's getting in this guy. Once again, 
we know exactly what you're getting in a, a person and a player. It can help with the, you know, pulling the trigger on draft weekend. And you get a guy like Wingo in there who's only six feet tall, but man, he is explosive. He is powerful. He's somebody who can really wreck the interior defensive line and be that pass rush threat that the Broncos need right now. So I like that. I think he's one of the best potential values on day three if he falls there because of his lack of ideal size with the 145th overall pick. And we got to park here for just a little bit because the Denver Broncos at 145 overall landed Luke McCaffrey, the wide receiver out of Rice. McCaffrey, of course, is another of the legacy and the, the lengthy legacy at this point of former Denver Broncos great Ed McCaffrey, who has, you know, a, a tremendous uh, amount of respect from Broncos country. One of the most beloved players in franchise history, old Ed, number 87. He's got sons all over the place in football. And Luke is just the latest. And he was supposed to be a big time quarterback prospect at Nebraska. Interestingly enough, though, as things kind of slowly just they, they weren't working out at Nebraska, he transfers to Rice and becomes a wide receiver. And what we've seen from him at the receiver position is just this natural inkling to go up and grab the ball in traffic. And because of his strong hands and contested catch situations, I think he's going to really endear himself to a lot of NFL front offices. And of course, it would be a bit of fan service for the Broncos to take a guy like McCaffrey in round five. But I think also he's got great developmental potential to add to your room, to add to, he could potentially add to the return game. He could do a lot of different things for you. I think Sean Payton will like his versatility. And I think he's an interesting fit for the Denver Broncos. With the 147th overall pick, the Broncos take Maris Liu Fao from Notre Dame, a versatile linebacker, could come in and give you special teams depth right away, but he also has the ability to play both off ball and as a pass rusher. So I kind of like his fit with Denver. He met with them formally at the scouting combine, maybe a, a name to file away there. In the sixth round, the Broncos take safety Trey Taylor out of Air Force. Now, this guy, an athletic marvel, certainly somebody who could come in and impact your special teams right away. And when you're in the later portion of the NFL draft, that's what you're looking for. Guys that could be developmental players, guys who could play special teams right away. And the Broncos need to replace Delarian Turner Yell, who may not be ready for the start of this season after suffering a, a ACL tear late last year. So another interesting late round defensive back possibility and the Broncos, they're always taking defensive backs under general manager, George Payton, the final pick of this mock draft for the Denver Broncos, 207th overall Christian Boyd, the defensive lineman out of Northern Iowa. Now I've been saying for a while, I really like the idea of the Broncos double dipping on the defensive line in this draft, whether it be guys from LSU or Illinois, where new defensive backs coach and passing game coordinator, Jim Leonard has connections. I think that if you just any way that you can double dip on the defensive line and get yourself some more bodies out there, some guys who could rotate and help you bring pass rush in waves. I think that kind of a fit would be nice for the Broncos in this draft, especially on day three, where there could be some steals like Christian Boyd, who's a big body, but he's explosive and he plays with that kind of relentless fire at the position. So all told Broncos country, we started off, we played with a little bit of fire. We traded down wanting a quarterback and we got Michael Penix Jr. We followed that up with the pick of Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver out of Florida in round two. And you go in round three and you double up on you get tight end Ben Snot from Kansas State and Blake Fisher, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame in round four. Mason McCormick, the interior offensive lineman out of South Dakota State. And then you go after the defensive line right after that. Makai Wingo out of LSU. You follow that Wingo pick with Luke McCaffrey, another wide receiver out of Rice, somebody who could potentially impact your, your team in a number of different ways, offensively and on special teams. Maris Lufau from Notre Notre Dame, Trey Taylor, a safety out of Air Force, and Christian Boyd, the defensive lineman out of Northern Iowa, round out what I think is a pre it would be a pretty good draft class for the Denver Broncos. It would be a new look for the team. It would be an interesting discussion all throughout the offseason if the team goes with Michael Penix Jr. as its potential starting quarterback. I, I think there's something to this Broncos country. I think keeping an open mind when it comes to Bo Nix, when it comes to Michael Penix Jr., or even a trade-up scenario, there's so many different things on the table right now. 
But certainly if you're looking to replace or, or really just add a lot of bricks to the foundation of this team and get better going forward, I think a lot of Broncos country would resonate with the team trading down and acquiring additional selections, getting those young players in the building as quickly as possible and making sure that you have a foundation to rock with going forward. Once again, Broncos country, happy mock draft Monday to all of you. Let us know what you think of this mock draft scenario and what you would do in a trade down scenario. We're going to continue to take a look at Broncos draft options this week on Locked on Broncos. We're also going to break down the signing of Josh Reynolds at the wide receiver position, what that could mean for the wide receiver room. A lot of fun things in store this week on Locked on Broncos. We appreciate you, Broncos country. We'll see you soon.